So Petri, I'm glad that we get the opportunity to catch up here at Mobile World Congress in Los Angeles. To start, could you maybe just tell us a little bit about the work that Tuple does and uh, share with us your vision for the company? Okay, so, uh, so we do complex automation use cases for mobile operators. So our customers range from, uh, uh, from T-Mobile here in the US uh, with several others in Europe and, uh, and Japan is the big trend right now where we are covering three of uh, the three biggest operators over there with different projects. So you mentioned T-Mobile, just to give us a sense of how Tuple works with operators, can you tell us a bit about that engagement, what their yes. problems were, what yes. solutions you provided? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So in, in general there is a, a huge amount of uh, highly complex but repetitive manual uh, work that uh, needs to be done by engineers uh, in, uh, in operators. And the bigger the operator, bigger the problem, right? Uh, so, so that's what we set out uh, uh, to solve. And this is not trivial, so, uh, so you need to build a system that is 24-7, uh, scales, can uh, ingest any kind of data for correlation purposes, build machine learning models, you know, using the subject matter expertise from the operator's organization, their top experts. How do you do all that in an, in an efficient, easy way? And then uh, reach the, the right decisions and put those decisions first to open loop and then to close loop. So that's typically how, how the operator pro, um, the, the project goes. So a lot of uh, work on the data pipeline, then building uh, the, the decision making models uh, using fancy AI technologies and, and so forth. So using automation to make the complex manageable for an operator. Mm -hmm. What do you see as the development trajectory here as 5G evolves, yeah. the use cases that operators yeah. are selling become more complex? What's the role of automation going to be over time? Well, everyone agrees on this one. So the, the role of automation is paramount. So uh, the complexity keeps increasing. It, it will not go down. You get uh, additional complexities coming from virtualization and so forth. How, how do you track where the faults are, where the issues are and so forth? So. Uh, so this is, this is one thing that uh, there's not a single uh, differing opinion, so the automation is key. How you go about it, how do you make it transparent, how you make it agile, you know, that's, the, that's then the key. And you mentioned T-Mobile, so, um, so uh, um, we started our, our work with uh, T-Mobile uh, on uh, one, of the, one of the things that now seem to be a really hot topic in, in all CSPs, which is the relentless focus on the customer uh, experience. So uh, T-Mobile and uh, Tuple uh, set out on a journey on, on um, figuring out how one can automate the engineering decisions when there is a customer issue. And, uh, and long story short, uh, we got into uh, about 100 times faster responses to, to, to customer issues by using uh, AI-based automation. We got the reduction of uh, 4x in the so-called no trouble founds. Software looks at things, all the things, all the time. So you know you you get a huge reduction on uh, on the no trouble founds and uh, and the efficiency gains in the level of 90 percent. So you can actually look at every single trending issue and uh, and still not uh, break the bank when it comes to the organizational load. And uh, additionally, all these are 100% consistent. So to me, that's one of the key benefits because then you can see in a non-biased way what's actually trending in your network. We see this AI care now uh, being, uh, being the hottest topic in our line of uh, you know, different automation use cases. Yeah, expand a little bit, if you will, on the, uh, the AI care. Yeah. What does that uh, do for an operator? How do they engage with the solution? Okay, so the first phase, we have kind of a three phases, uh, um, and there's, there's a lot of things that go into this, but the first phase is the reactive part, where someone calls in and, you know, I, I don't get an internet or I have a slow internet, so, uh, so then uh, our system picks up that in information uh, from the customer care systems, starts massive correlation, you know, up to 30 different data feeds, figuring out root causes. Our biggest deployment has 900 different root causes and actions. And uh, that creates a, a, a fantastic value on the, on the NPS and on the efficiency. The next stage is proactive care. And this proactive care we have had in production with our customers in 2019. 
So the same thing, but you actually look at potential triggers, you create so-called virtual tickets. And then it goes through the similar type of, uh, of a logic flow uh, with machine learning models and uh, immediate actuations uh, to fix things even before the customer notices. So that's great. That brings us to this year. So, uh, so uh, earlier our, our speed to resolution, you know, before two bullets typically, you know, tens of hours, 20 to 40 hours, uh, if engineers do their work properly, we brought it down to 1.5 hours. This year, we are bringing it into 50 seconds. Now, what that means is that it opens up the whole new uh, applications like, what if you do a first call resolution? So, you know, you can run this immediately when somebody calls in or somebody walks into a retail store. You know, uh, um, if there is an, a trending issue or even an upselling opportunity, you know, all these massive correlations from the kind of a mainly engineering feeds, uh, you know, can help really the, the operator's uh, core business. So. Uh, we are really excited about the opportunities that, uh, that we are bringing on the table uh, as an enabler for, the, uh, for our customers. So when you go from reactive to proactive, mm -hmm. what's the next step? Would it be predictive? Well, proactive is predictive. Yeah. So, so, uh, so you know, there, is, there are methodologies there. And we have anomaly detections. We have uh, natural language processing. So all these are worked together with our customers uh, and using our enabling platform called Tuple OS. So, uh, um, so there is a, there's a lot of uh, underlying uh, uh, kind of hidden functions that, uh, that have been requested by our customers and then implemented by us. Uh, so but predictions, they are, you know, they, they are you know, normal things uh, uh, for us to do. And I'm also curious, uh, we are here at Los Angeles at Mobile World Congress, and uh, any observations from the meetings you've had, the speeches you've seen? Oran, Oran is a big topic. We are an Oran uh, member uh, as well. So, so our use cases when it comes to the network optimization and so forth, so they they fit exactly into the into the RIC area. So, in a way, we have uh, we have done uh, RIC use cases before RIC existed. So, uh, 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 very nice to see that. Uh, that uh, industry is coming up uh, with the similar kind of conclusions that uh, that we have al also come and uh, and hence hence the, the partnering with uh, with the Oran team. A um, lot of activities on the 5G. Uh, um, very interesting announcements. Uh, uh, I particularly like, by the way, the uh, the the announcement of uh, this cryptocurrency type of a network rollout. Uh, so let's see where that goes. So there's a, I like the, the speed of innovation seems to be getting a little bit faster in telecom. So, uh, um, so I think there are good things to come uh, uh, for the years, uh, years to come. Well, Petri, I really appreciate you taking the time to speak with us and tell us about the work you're doing with Tuple. All right, thank you.